back in action on home turf on Saturday, taking on Sacramento State in a Big Sky Conference game. Joining us now is Kyle Hansen of MTN Sports. And Kyle, I think a lot of us are all kind of wondering again, who's going to be at quarterback? Chris Brown had his ups and downs last weekend. What's your sense of what's going to happen on Saturday? Hey, Mike, you know, I think, uh, you know, for the most part going forward here, I think fans should pretty much just expect to see Chris Brown under center until we get some kind of update on Cam Humphrey, which I would guess is unlikely, you know, just because UM doesn't really give injury updates. And, you know, the injury he looked to have sustained against Eastern Washington looked like it could have been pretty severe. That would at least knock him out for a few games. You know, and like you said, Chris Brown, he had some ups and downs. Uh, there's been a lot of hype and excitement around him just as far as, like, his physical attributes. But he looked like a guy who was making his first start against Dixie State, you know, he had some overthrown balls. He probably held the ball a little bit too long a couple times, which was all in sacks. But on the flip side, you know, he made some great throws and he really settled in as the game went on. And, you know, UM's offense kind of found its rhythm, especially in that third quarter, and they were able to pull away from Dixie State. So, you know, he's probably their quarterback of the future. So the more reps he can get, you know, now as they wait for Cam Humphrey to get on the mend is probably good for this team going forward. As far as their opponent, Sacramento State, um Traditionally a pretty good team, pretty good program. They beat the Grizz in 2019, the last time they met. So what do you see from the Hornets uh, on Saturday? Yeah, Sacramento State's kind of an interesting team this year because they also played Dixie State, and but they only beat Dixie State 19-7. to I believe it was the first game of the year for them. But, you know, Sac State is 2-0 in league play right now. They've beaten Idaho State and, I, and Southern Utah, you know, kind of two of the bottom feeders of the Big Sky Conference, but they beat them. And so, you know, like you mentioned, Sac State was really good in 2019. They beat the Grizz pretty handily in Sacramento. This year, they're kind of a wild card. They Troy Taylor, their head coach, is known for offense. They're running kind of a dual quarterback system right now. They have one guy who throws it more, the other who runs it a little bit more. So, but they're still kind of a wild card because, you know, how are they going to match up? They, you know, I think only lost by 12 points to Pac-12 Cal. And, uh, but on the flip side, like I said, kind of a close contest with Dixie State, who hasn't won a game this year. So, you know, it could be which Sac State team shows mm -hmm. up on Saturday. It seems like most teams kind of get up to play the Grizz because of the atmosphere. And, you know, just with the way they've looked recently, you know, even before 2019, the previous couple of years, they looked good. So this seems like a team that is going to be kind of a mid-tier to upper-tier Big Sky Conference team going forward. And, you know, I imagine this will be probably one of the tougher Big Sky Conference tests the Grizz will have this year. All right, just a, a, a one final question here, Kyle. As far as we're about to the halfway point of the season already, and, you know, the Grizz got off to that great start, obviously, with the win at Washington. Uh, but the offense has kind of sputtered off and on inconsistent, and the defense hasn't looked quite as good. So, so you know, what can we expect from this team moving forward? You know, the biggest thing, kind of, I think offense is kind of the biggest thing in finding that consistency for this group just because the offense has kind of been the biggest question mark kind of from week to week. You know, we against the Eastern, or, uh, going into the Eastern Washington game, it was a matter of who's going to step up, Montana's offense or Eastern's defense. And Eastern's defense stepped up and the Eagles won that game where, you know, Montana's offense, like they've looked really good in drives. Like they'll put together these great drives and score and then they'll, you know, go on these droughts for the next couple of quarters. And that's kind of the biggest thing. They need to shore up a little bit. It doesn't help that, you know, obviously Cam Humphrey is injured. They lost Gabe Solser, their starting slot wide receiver. They've you know, lost uh, Colton Kynes, uh, their starting offensive guard who retired for mental health reasons. So, you know, they've lost a few players here that, you know, are key components on this mm -hmm. unit. So they've had to have some guys step up. And I think that's kind of one of the biggest things because the defense has looked really good, even with some of the injuries d they've dealt with. They've had a number of injuries on the defensive line. They've been without starting safety Gavin Robertson for the last three games. And Garrett Graves has filled in his spot. And, you know, he's done well. And so have the guys on the D line, some of these younger uh, freshmen and sophomores. So the defense has really played the part. They've stepped up. They've looked good. Special teams, same thing. But, you know, if they find consistency on offense, they're going to continue being a dangerous team. But, you know, that's probably the biggest thing I would say that they need to search for right now. All right. We'll see if they can get it together on Saturday against Sacramento State. Kyle, thank you so much. Enjoy the game, and we'll look forward to your reports over the weekend.